let me introduce you to this almost solderless crystal set. Not only that, but there's no coil winding and you don't need a variable capacitor. The performance is surprisingly good. Let's get into it and give it a demonstration. Here's the circuit diagram, pretty similar to any other crystal set. The coil comprises two RF chokes, 100 microhenry each. Those values are critical because with the parallel capacitor, they set the resonant frequency and therefore the station that you're tuned to. 100 microhenry in series makes 200 microhenry total. And there are formulas online that tell you how much parallel capacitance you need to get it to resonate on the AM broadcast band. And roughly it's around 47 picofarad for 1.6 megahertz, the top end of the band, and for 530 kilohertz down at the bottom end, around 470 picofarad. So Depending on which station you want to listen to, you need to change that capacitor value. Uh, normally you'd use a variable capacitor, but with this set we'll do something different. I'll talk about that later on. Anyway, there's 200 microhenry here. The reason why I'm using separate inductors, and I'll just show you, uh, they look like fat resistors, but there they are. The great thing about them is you can order them online. There's no coil winding or messing with taps. It's very, very simple. But the reason why I'm using two is that you've got a central tapping point here for the diode. And that gives it a little bit better selectivity than if you were to have the diode right up here. But if you really wanted to, you could just use a 220 microhenry and then you wouldn't need the tap and you'd just connect the diode up here. That would also work but be a little bit less selective. Because I'm using quite a long wire as an antenna, it would be 20 or 30 meters long, I do have to provide some series capacitance here. If you don't provide that series capacitance then the sensitivity might be good but the selectivity will be very poor and stations will be jumbled together. So I've used 47 picofarad, though that value will vary. If you are using a very short antenna, you might not need any capacitor here. If you're using a very long antenna, you might need a lower value of capacitor. And it also depends on whether you've got one station or multiple stations and how far they are away from you. But overall, have a selection of capacitors, which you'll need for this project anyway, and just try different values. The optimum value may be different depending on which part of the broadcast band. You're likely to require a larger value for stations lower down in the band, and maybe a smaller value for stations near the top end of the band. If the value here is too big, then you won't hear stations at the top end at all. So I've got 47 picofarad. It's a good average value to use, but just bear in mind, it may need to be smaller or it may need to be bigger. And it depends on the length of your antenna. Earth is very important as with all crystal sets. I used cold water tap or a stake in the ground. As for the diode, it has to be a germanium diode. Apparently there are fake diodes and they aren't so good. OA95, 1N34A. Um, I'll just give you a close up just behind my finger. That's a germanium diode. Normally they are transparent glass with a band on one end. How that's connected in the circuit doesn't matter so much. What I'm doing here is you could use a crystal earpiece. I'll show you one of those. These crystal earpieces are a bit bigger than the usual earbuds you see, and they're just a single thing rather than two of them for stereo. The difference is they are high impedance and very sensitive, both things that you need for a crystal set. 
but if you don't have a crystal earpiece then you can use a piezo transducer notice i said transducer and not buzzer they can look similar but a transducer is almost a crystal earpiece in a box just doesn't have the thing to go in your ear but this will operate successfully on a crystal set and be about as good as the crystal earpiece in parallel with it is a resistor value is not critical it needs to be fairly high though i've got 220k ohm but it could be anywhere between 100k and 470k that just provides a dc path and helps the radio work better i've got an electrolytic capacitor here it's not connected in the circuit that you see here but it may be needed if you're using this set with an external amplifier and that could be useful if you don't have a transducer or crystal earpiece maybe you're in a weaker signal area then an external amplifier gives you a bit of audio gain you're not getting the free power aspect of the crystal radio but you can probably hear more stations when you're using it and it's helpful at least for testing purposes so some sort of amplified computer speaker can be connected up to this but depending on how things are set up you may need this capacitor in series i haven't yet talked about how i'm going to do the variable capacitor thing given that we're not using a variable capacitor as such what i'm doing instead is this is a 8 pin IC socket mounted on some Vero strip board. Notice the direction that the strips go. Everything on one side is connected to the same strip. They're all connected in parallel. And same with the other side. So the idea with this is that you can put in various capacitors in parallel and if you've got a handful of capacitors you need values like 10 picofarad 22 picofarad 47 100 and 220 if you've got a combination of those then you can get a wide range of capacitance values for example 100 plus 47 gives you 147 picofarad you make sure both of them are inserted like this so they're connected in parallel the capacitors in parallel add in value this is fairly critical because this will affect what station you're receiving so make sure you've got a good selection of capacitors you might want to make up a paper table showing you what values you can get and if you wanted to you could plug those values into the online LC calculator and that will work out its resonant frequency if you have 200 microhenry in as the inductance. Note though that especially if you're using quite a high value here the resonant frequency will be lower than calculated. You won't be exactly spot on a station necessarily but Crystal sets are generally fairly broad in selectivity, so it should be near enough if you've got a good selection of capacitors. Make sure though, as I mentioned before, you've got some low values, like here's a 10 picofarad, which is good. If you've got 5 picofarad, that would possibly also be desirable, but bearing in mind there's only a maximum of 4 capacitors you can have here. If you've got a 14 pin socket then you could use that instead just have a longer piece of strip board and that will allow you more capacitor variations and finer steps between the capacitance points but generally speaking provided you've got a good selection of capacitors then four in parallel should be about the most you need right here is my drawing of how i've got the parts inserted in the solderless breadboard maybe it's clearer if i show you the breadboard itself important thing and you don't actually see this but you can verify it with a multimeter is that all these strips here a b c d and e 
they are all connected. Uh, each line, you can see one, two, three, four, five. Each line is connected. Then there's a break here, and then the ones on the other side, they're connected as well. So that can be handy because you can make things without having to have too many connecting wires. Although you can see here, this is the earth connection where there's quite a few things connected. Then I've got some wire here just connecting both sides. This is the crystal set without the tuned circuit capacitor, but to put it in, just plug that in there. And this is the complete set. Getting back to audio reproduction, the thing about this transducer and the difference between it and the crystal earpiece is the crystal earpiece has a barrel that goes into the ear. This doesn't, and that makes a huge difference to the audio reproduction. You'll need to find some way of making a barrel. One thing that looks promising is if you can get a stethoscope, and I've seen them quite cheaply online, you might be able to use parts from that. But you basically want a way to pipe the audio from this directly to your ear canal. And if you do that, then the audio quality will be much better with the transducer. Um, because transducers do sound almost like very high pitched, very little bass, almost like a mosquito is stuck in there. That is because you are listening to it without a proper connection between this and your ear. If you took this barrel off the crystal earpiece, and a lot of them had them unscrewable, I tried unscrewing this and it didn't undo. But yeah, the crystal earpiece would be just as bad if it didn't have that barrel that made contact with your ear. Now in theory, and to be very crude, then a piece of flex, the outer covering of say, a mains cord or an extension cord would be okay, but you probably don't want to be sticking this into your ear. So that's why I suggest the stethoscope idea, or alternatively, if you're clever with a 3D printer, you might be able to make something like this and then just glue it to here, maybe have some wires going to the board, and then you will have made yourself a crystal earpiece. And that will work very well. In fact, if anything, this is slightly better than this crystal earpiece. Or you could just be lazy and go against the spirit of the crystal set and just pipe the audio into a separate audio amplifier, which is what I'll do in a moment when I demonstrate this. Once again, this is a view of the whole receiver. The parts that you'll be changing when you're using it are the capacitors here in this IC socket to change the station, and also potentially the capacitor in series with the antenna. Here I'm using the crystal set with an external amplifier. That's the earth connection, going to the cold water tap, and then this is my large outside antenna. Just do some tuning around. Ideally, I'd be putting multiple capacitors in parallel, and you do that to get the tuning more precise. But here we're on the highest frequency station. And then I'll put in various capacitors in parallel and you'll hear the different stations that we can get. So there we are, you just heard 8.55am. 
With that, we're just on 1377. This is a station on And here we are, it's got a lot stronger. And then we'll try another capacitor. Now I've got another station. Here's two Trini Pico Farad. This will get us somewhere lower down in the broadcast band. And you can tell here it's a different station to where we had it before. That's our simple crystal set. If you build one like it, then let us know how you go in the comments. Enjoy these videos? Want to start in amateur radio? Well, check out my books, Ham Radio Get Started for USA readers and the Australian Ham Radio Handbook for those in Australia. For more information, visit my website, vk3ye.com or search their titles on Amazon.